Welcome. Today we're going to talk about me feeding my research habits. How do I find resources, I guess, or what resources do I prioritize um, in my research? What tools do I use a little bit? Uh, yeah, just so you can see what I do and what I prioritize. Before we do that, two ways to support the channel. Number one is to go to patreon.com slash Curtis McHale and become a patron. Number two is to go to curtismchale.ca slash Skillshare. Take one of my courses. It's one on Tick Tick. It's one on time blocking. And I just finished the script before I record this on February 2nd um, for my getting started with Zettel Casting course, which I hope to record this week and have produced by the end of the week. It'll be like a birthday present to myself, I guess. Buckle up my research habits. Now, first, there's actually two tools that I use. First, why don't I put two up? First, there's actually two tools that I use um, to support my research habits. Number one is DevonThink and DevonThink to go on my iPad. Uh, I use that as my primary source repository that is for other people's thoughts. And then second is Craft now. I will say it officially, although I, I don't know why I've been holding off a little bit. Um, I guess it's only been two weeks, but I really feel that I've moved to Craft um, from Obsidian. I'll do a whole video specifically on why I did that. The short one is that I do most of my research, most of my writing, most of my work that needs those type of notes on my iPad. And when Obsidian doesn't have an iPad app and the iPad app they're talking about is more a viewer than a full featured iPad app, that's just not going to be useful to me long term. So craft uh, is for my notes, my thoughts, my connections, uh, literature notes go in there, but then they get, you know, I have a special, I guess, folder you call them uh, in craft. I have a special folder for those and then they get expanded out uh, into my own notes in its own different folder um, for actual thoughts on the book. And I'll do a video about that coming up too, actually, how I take literature notes and move them off into their own notes. So research, where do things come from? Most of my research notes come from books. You can see a little, little tiny slice. This is like just the books I want to read over my shoulder. Um, you can't see the couple hundred books sitting over on my shelf or can you see? No, I just did a video about the books that came in and out of my library. So you can't see the big stack that usually is beside my couch either because they're not all on shelves yet. They're still kind of piled in a different spot. Anyway, most of my stuff comes from books, actually, when it comes to, I'll say, life, um, parenting, running a business, racism, all those style of topics, right? Building a, a good city is another uh, interesting topic for me. Those all really come from books. Um, some of it, I guess a little bit of it would come from YouTube, right? There's a great channel called Not Just Bikes that I follow that has really good stuff about like building a strong city, building a walkable city, building a city that is safe for kids. Uh, it's not a, it's not just about bikes. It's about building a good livable city um, from tax revenues all the way to city structure and infrastructure. Um, but most of it does come from books. Now, there's actually kind of two spots where that differs, where my research doesn't come from books. Number one is programming stuff. My research mostly comes from online. Stack Exchange is the programmer's best friend. Um, I'm there all the time. I'm on different WordPress sites that I know that spe are specific to WordPress, and I follow those a lot and find those a lot. Now, I've been doing this for 10 plus years programming, so generally I can look at the code uh, knowing my problem and say, yes or no, this is right for me. And then I can modify it as needed to whatever I need it to be. Um, I don't need to read the whole long blog post a lot. I'm just looking for kind of at least a partial solution or what sort of leads me towards what I am doing. I have hair sticking up. I do have hair sticking up. Well, hair sticking up today. And the other exception here is when I'm looking at electronic purchases, in which case I often go to YouTube. Uh, I go to YouTube. I watch. So I've been watching a lot of videos on different running watches. Mine's a couple years old and kind of dying. My wife's is not as old as mine, but it's still kind of dying. So I'm looking at getting some for her. I'm getting a new one for her for her birthday in April. Um, and just kind of researching the Koros, Garmin, Sunto. If you're in the sports stuff, you'll know. Um, and kind of what is the best watch for her at her price, because she also needs a smaller wrist size, smaller bezel size than what I could handle because her wrists are smaller. That's really it. Primary sources from the web go into DevonThink when I find them, although I don't worry about those as much um, as I do books. Um, yeah, I don't worry about those as much. Now, YouTube videos, so when I did my research, my time blocking course, I actually downloaded all the videos from my Mac, put them in DevonThink, and then I actually have copies of all the videos. The few that I said, eh, this wasn't worthwhile, I just deleted from DevonThink. Um, but I don't do that with everything, only resources that I say, hey, if I did not have this resource source material to go back to in the future, I would be poorer for it. I download those 
with Downey on macOS, drop them in DevonThink, and I tagged them appropriately, and I actually put a link from DevonThink, uh, from the DevonThink item in craft out to, um, so I can find it again in DevonThink. And there's a link, one of these sides up above, to a shortcut that does that. And I even updated the shortcut from the video because there's a little tweak. It wasn't quite working right, but now it does. Um, that's it. That's what I do with my research. Books first, uh, online second. Books are online first for programming, usually video first for tech purchases. What do you do? How do you prioritize your sources and, and what tools are you using? Right? I said Dev and Think for primary sources and uh, I was going to say Obsidian, but Craft for uh, my thoughts on those sources for building my Zettelkasten system. If you liked the video, thumbs up below. If you loved it, subscribe, hit the bell. And YouTube says they'll let you know something happened, but, you know, who knows. Um, other ways to support the channel are to go to patreon.com slash Curtis McHale, become a patron, or to go to curtismchale.ca slash Skillshare, take my course on TickTick, -tick, take my course on time blocking, or my course on getting started with Zettelkasten should be out by the time you see this. If it's not, bug me in the comments. Say, hey, where's that course, Curtis? You're being a jerk. And I'll say, eh, stuff happened. Have a good one.